This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. Welcome to the Barbados Today Evening Update for Thursday, May 21st. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Topping the news this evening, a 23-year-old father was today charged with manslaughter in the death of his three-month-old daughter. Akida Bradshaw of Sturgis St. Thomas was slapped with the charges and remanded to the psychiatric hospital after appearing in the District D Magistrates Court. His daughter, a killer, died at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital after she was transported there in an unconscious state on the 2nd of May. Education Minister Ronald Jones is calling on Barbadians to be patient as investigations into the apparent suicide of Shima Weeks continue. The plea comes as the autopsy on the 12-year-old's body remains on hold as authorities work out the details to fly in a forensic expert. Speaking at a Democratic Labour Party Christchurch West Central Branch meeting last night, the Education Minister said that like other Barbadians, he too is concerned about the tragedy, but he is adamant that those responsible for the probe must be allowed to do their jobs. It's a matter that I would, I would leave to the professionals who are doing their work, the police, the people who do the autopsy, forensic pathologists and all of that. As a nation that has been shocked, we need to know, but we ourselves can't tell you anything. We have to wait. And I'm saying Patience is a virtue in this. I know the nation is on edge because there is a young person, 12, whose life is not among us anymore. And, 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 and understandably, we should, we should feel aware. Police are investigating a report of a shooting incident in Beckwith Street, the city, early this morning. According to police spokesman David Welch, a 41-year-old man reported that he was shot at around 3 a.m. while in the area. Fortunately, he was unhurt. Two houses in the area were allegedly damaged. To news from the industrial front, the island's top trade union today put the country on notice for national strike action. General Secretary Tony Moore told the press conference this morning that a series of unresolved issues involving at least half a dozen companies have brought the situation to a boiling point. Moore warned that the time for talking was over and unless these outstanding matters were resolved soon, Barbados could be hit by massive dislocation. She listed utilities, construction, manufacturing, agriculture, tourism and financial services as some of the sectors causing headaches for workers and the BWU. We have reached a point where all reasonable attempts have been made to talk with principals at different levels to address the issues outlined above and a number of the other issues that we have to deal with with different companies. We are tired of receiving commitments and having those commitments just remain that commitments that are not followed through by action. The Executive Council of the Barbados Workers Union met last night and has had to give careful reflection to the situation and particularly to these areas that have been highlighted. In the case of customs, we are to be meeting with our bargaining unit later today with a view to determining the way forward. The union leader also expressed concern about the delay by the Employment Rights Tribunal to hear the case of the dismissed National Conservation Commission workers. Up to this morning, attempts to get from the tribunal a specific date to have those hearings commence could not be confirmed. At the same time that the tribunal is commencing cases and we're not sure what process is being 
youth to call those cases because there are issues that even came in or would have been sent up following the MCC matter that we are being approached by the tribunal <coughs> to send information in those regards while we have not had similar approaches regarding the issue of the NCC. Meantime, the daily operations at the, the Bridgetown port were impacted for a second day by work to rule action by customs guards. An acting assistant general secretary of the National Union of Public Workers, Wayne Waldron, is calling on authorities to address the situation before it escalates. The NEP has been interested on full disclosure of information in order that workers can be properly advised and make well informed decisions regarding the vehicle. The NEP is demanding that customs must be treated with respect. To do otherwise will exacerbate the potentially volatile industrial relations permit that exists within that department. In other news, Liat shareholder governments will meet in Barbados tomorrow for talks on increasing the shareholder base of the financially strapped airline. Chairman of the shareholder governments, St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, says apart from Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados and Dominica, invitations have been sent out to two other regional heads. Now this discussion is important in terms of the feeding in where we are going to a shareholders meeting specifically of Liat now on Friday in Barbados. Where in addition to the existing shareholder governments, I have also invited the government of um, St. Lucia and the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. As you have heard, the government of St. Kitts and Nevis has already accepted the invitation to come. Uh, Prime Minister Antony has not yet indicated whether he will be available for Friday. I'm quite sure if he's available, he will come because from our discussions, he's showing a great interest in getting involved as, a, as an equity partner, certainly to provide support within, within LIAT as we go forward with reforming LIAT. There's regional and international news after this short break. We pick up with news from the region. Trinidad and Tobago was today jolted by a 4.6 magnitude earthquake. According to the University of the West Indies Seismic Research Unit, the quake, which was also felt in Grenada, occurred at 9.25 a.m., just north of the Gulf of Paria. There was no immediate reports of injuries or damages. And finally, the British Prime Minister says he will not give up on his immigration target of 100,000, despite a net migration to the UK reaching its highest level for a decade. If you have uncontrolled immigration, you have uncontrolled pressure on public services. And that raises basic issues of fairness. Uncontrolled immigration can damage our labor market and push down wages. And working people rightly want a government that's on their side. Uncontrolled immigration means too many people coming to the UK legally, but staying illegally. And people are fed up with a system that allows those who are not meant to be in our country to remain here. And on that note, we come to the end of our evening updates, but we'll be back again tomorrow morning. Until then, log on to 
www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. We're also on Channel 101 on 9 TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Have a great evening. This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here.